Good evening and happy Wednesday night, everybody. I am Brother Brandon, and I will be hosting this prayer meeting tonight. Uh, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to those who are watching online and those who are on Zoom. Hello. Uh, let us begin with a prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, thank you very much for bringing us to wherever we are safely, Lord. I ask that if we're on the road, you will keep us safe. If we're at home, you will keep us safe, that we may be able to get to bed and wake up the next morning refreshed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We will now um, begin you're, with our song you're service. Be the pastor. Uh, we you're will start. Be the pastor. Uh, oh, not not the past, not the pastor. Yeah, uh, Brother Vern, we do have our pastor coming in to do. Oh, the, okay. Yes, I'm just here for the song service. I was looking forward to hearing you, Pastor, for once. Oh, maybe another day, Brother Vern. Maybe another day. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Hymn number 626. In a little while, we're going home. Let us sing a song that will cheer us by the way. In a little while, we're going home. For the night will end in the everlasting day. In a little while, we're going home. In a little, little while, in a little, little while, we shall cross the billows home. We shall meet at last when the stormy winds are past. In a little while we're going on. We will do the work that our hands may find to do. In a little while we're going on. And the grace of God will our daily strength renew. In a little while we're going on. In a little, little while, in a little, little while, we shall cross the billows more. We shall meet at last when the stormy winds are best. In a little while, we're going home. We will smooth the path for some weary wayward feet. In a little while we're going home. And may loving not spread around an infant sweet. In a little while we're going home. In a little while, in a little while, we shall cross the billows home. We shall meet at last when the stormy winds are best. In a little while we're going on. There's a rest beyond, there's relief from every care. In a little while we're going on. And no tears shall fall in that city bright and fair. In a little while we're going home. In a little while, in a little while, we shall cross the billows home. We shall meet at last when the stormy winds are best. Yeah. In a little while we're going home. Amen, amen. amen. Now, let us go back to hymn number 620. I, on Jordan's stormy banks I stand. Amen. On Jordan's stormy banks I stand and cast a wishful eye. To Canaan's fair and happy land Where my possessions lie I am bound for the promised land I am bound for the promised land All who will come and go with me I am bound for the promised land 
O'er all those wide extended plain shines one eternal day. There Christ the sun forever reigns and scatters night away. I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. All who will come and go with me, I am bound for the promised land. When shall I reach that happy place and be forever blessed? When shall I see my Father's face and in his kingdom rest? I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. All who will come and go with me, I am bound for the promised land. Filled with delight, my raptured soul would here no longer stay. Though Jordan's waves around me roll, fearless I launch away. I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. All who will come and go with me, I am bound for the promised land. Amen. I am bound for the promised land, and I hope you are too. Let us turn to him 617. We are living, we are dwelling in a grand and awful time. And in this time, we should be standing with Christ. We are living, we are dwelling in a grand and awful time. In an age of ages telling to be living is sublime. Hark the waking up of nations, Gog and Magog to the fray. Hark what sound of his creation, groaning for latter day. Christian rouse and arm for conflict, nerve thee for the battlefield. Bear the helmet of salvation, and the mighty gospel shield. Let the breastplate peace be on thee. Take the spirit sword in hand. Boldly, fearlessly go forth then. In Jehovah's strength to stand. And the prince of evil spirits. Great deceiver of the world. He who at the blessed Jesus wants his deadly weapon hurled, cometh with unwanted power, knowing that his reign will cease when the kingdom shall be given to the mighty Prince of Peace. Christian rouse fight in this warfare cease not till the victory's won till your captain loud proclaimeth servant of the Lord well done he alone who thus is faithful who abideth to the end at the promise in the kingdom an eternity to spend. Amen. 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 I hope we abide so that we can spend an eternity in heaven. Amen. Yes, amen. Get now, to it. we will move on to hymn number 604. And can I get the time, please, so I can act accordingly? Ooh. Yes. 
Please turn your hymnals to 604. We know not the hour. We know not the hour of the master's appearing. Yet signs old foretell that the moment is nearing. When he shall return, tis a promise most cheering. But we know not the hour. He will go. Let us watch and be ready. He will go. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He will come in the clouds of his Father's bright glory. But we know not the hour. There's life for the wise who are seeking salvation. There's truth in the book of the each prophecy points to the great consummation, but we know not the end. He will go. Let us watch and be ready. He will go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, he will come in the clouds of his Father's bright glory, but we know not the old. We'll watch and we'll pray with our lamps trimmed and burning. We'll work and we'll wait. Till the master's returning, we'll sing and rejoice. Every omen is earning, but we know not the hour. He will go. Let us watch and be ready. He will go. Hallelujah, hallelujah, he will come in the clouds of his Father's bright glory, but we know not the hour. Amen, amen. And since we know not the hour, we must, 602, oh brother, we must be faithful. Oh, brother, be faithful, soon Jesus will come, for whom we have waited so long. Oh, soon we shall enter our glorious home and join in the conqueror's song. Oh, brother, be faithful, for why should we prove unfaithful to him who has shown? Such deep, such unbounded and infinite love, who died to redeem us his own. O oh, brother, be faithful, the city of gold, prepared for the good and the blessed. It's waiting is portals of pearl to unfold, and welcome thee into thy breast. O oh, brother, be faithful, not long shall we stay in weariness here and for long. Time's dark night of sorrow is wearing away with days to the glorious morn. O oh, brother, be faithful, he soon will descend creation's omnipotent king, while legions of angels his chariot attend, and bomb wreaths of victory bring. O oh, brother, be faithful, and soon shalt thou hear thy Savior pronounce the glad word. 
Well done, faithful servant, thy title is clear. To enter the joy of our Lord. Oh, brother, be faithful, eternity's years shall tell for thy faithful as now. When bright smiles of gladness shall scatter thy tears, a coronet gleam on thy brow. Oh, brother, be faithful, the promise is sure, thy saints to the faithful and tried. To reign with the ransomed, immortal and pure, and ever with Jesus abide. Amen. Amen. Now, I believe that uh, this is Wednesday night prayer meeting, says Gina. Yes. I think then it's only fitting to sing a prayer song. Right, so three minutes, right. three minutes, then we can do a stanza and a verse, maybe. Tis the blessed hour of prayer, when our hearts lowly bend. Hymn number. Tis the blessed hour of prayer. Any time to be the blessed hour of prayer. What number is it for the present? It appears that I can't find it. All right, it's the blessed hour of prayer. Tis the blessed hour of prayer when our hearts lowly bent and we gather to Jesus, our Savior and friend. If we come to him in faith, his protection to share, what a bomb for the weary. Oh, how sweet to be there. Blessed are of prayer. Blessed are of prayer. What a bomb for the weary. Oh, how sweet to be there. Tis the blessed hour of food. When the Savior draws me with a tender compassion, his children to hear. When he tells us we may cast at his feet every care, what a bomb for the weary. Oh, how sweet to be there. Blessed are of prayer, blessed are of prayer, what a bomb for the weary, oh how sweet to be there. Tis the blessed hour of prayer, when the him we believe, that the blessings we're meeting, will surely receive in the fullness of his trust we shall lose every care what a bomb for the weary oh how sweet to be there blessed are of prayer blessed are of prayer what a bomb for the weary. Oh, how sweet to be there. Amen. Amen. What a bomb for the weary. Oh, how sweet to be there. Whenever you are in trouble and whenever you need God's assistance, please pray. No, I believe. Even when you don't need, when you think you don't need assistance. Amen, Sister Gina. Even when you think you don't need time. assistance, talk with it. it's good to talk with the Lord. Amen. Now, with that said, we will move to Pastor. Uh, Pastor, are you available? I see people Very much in the present. Street. Sometimes we got to give <laughs> a little bit of grace and show ah. a little love. Amen. I think. Thank you very much. Love covers it all. 
Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Well, thanks, thanks to everyone. My time is up. Uh, <laughs> 7.51, Pastor, is heading on yeah. now. Yeah, I'm here, I'm here. Friends, very present, very present. Present, 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 teacher. Let me say thank you very much, Sister Erica, and all participants. Thank you very much, Brother Brandon and Sister Gina backing up there. Company, thank you for coming to join in our midweek oasis. This is when we come together to be refreshed, to inspire one another. We have no time to waste, no time to lose. And so it is not too late for you to invite somebody to join in. Uh, to be unselfish about this thing. God continues to be good. And uh, the Christian journey uh, continues. And as God's children, we can't afford to veer off track. God be steadfast in faith and keep on keeping on. So whether you're coming from the United States and a part of this country, or you're coming from England, Grand Cayman, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Antigua. Wherever you're coming from, we welcome you as usual in rich and warm profusion. And so I'm going to ask you to bow your heads at this time as we seek the Lord through the medium of prayer. Our great God and Father, we thank you for one more time the privilege of coming together as a church family to share, to be inspired by your word. We thank you, God, for your promised presence, for your Holy Spirit in the midst of your people. And now as we seek to encourage each other on this Christian journey, be in the midst of your people. Guide us, direct us. And I pray, God, that you'll make these moments spent meaningful in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, I want to believe that most of us, if not all of us, are quite familiar with the scripture that talks about the straight gate. If you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, and you can turn to St. Matthew chapter 7. St. Matthew, first book of the New Testament, chapter 7. And we will hear something from Jesus Christ himself. St. Matthew chapter 7. want to make sure that you are there, verse 13, thereabout. And I want you to listen, because as usual, I want you to listen with a view to participate. Before I go any further, I hope that someone from Cooper City is preparing to pray. Now, Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, says something. It says, in that, well, if your Bible is like mine, the red writings represents, uh, represent the, the, the words of Jesus Christ himself. And so uh, I, w uh, I hope you're there. Jesus is speaking in his own words in red. And it says here, enter ye in at the straight gate. And I want you to observe that word. It is not S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T, but S T R A. IT, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go therein, are thereat. I'm reading from the King James Version. And it says, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Few there be that find it. I'm going to read it again. The Lord seemed to be making an appeal to his people, telling them how to enter and where from. He says here, Enter ye in at the S-T-R-A-I-T gate, so he's telling you where to enter. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. 
So it doesn't take great care for us to find the road to destruction. It's why. It just need to walk. <laughs> you understand? All right. It says here, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate. And narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. You know, um, the Bible was written so long ago, brethren, that sometimes some of the expressions that we encounter, we in our present 21st century postmodern world are sometimes having difficulty trying to unravel what Jesus is saying. Now the Bible is written written in a language from way back when. And it is written. It remains written. And you have to take this kind of language that was used years ago, years ago, centuries ago, and bring it to make sense in this time when so many things uh, are so different. And for the word to find relevance in the midst of God's people, we have to take a little trek back into history to appreciate uh, uh, what we are reading here. It is important to note that in the time of Jesus Christ, um, the people back there in Palestine, they lived in cities that were walled up, even like Jerusalem. You remember when um, Nehemiah, in Nehemiah chapter 2, when Nehemiah appealed to his brothers, his friends, his co-laborers, when the walls of Jerusalem were broken down and he, he, he couldn't take it anymore. Uh, we all know the story about Sanballat and Tobiah and those naysayers and negative persons who tried to discourage the, pro the project. But then Nehemiah, like a good general, said to his brothers, let us arise and build so that we be no more a reproach to the nations around. When you occupied a city or a country that was left for any and anybody to just run through it freely, it was like, like an embarrassment, disgrace. And so when we sing, for example, there is a green hill far away without a city wall, it doesn't mean that it, it, <laughs> it doesn't mean that it without a city wall doesn't mean a city without wall. But Jesus Christ is with where they where the dear Lord was crucified, yea, he died to save us all. It is talking about Jesus being crucified on the outside. So the without here, like when the Bible says in Revelation chapter 20, without are dogs and sorcerers, I mean outside. Outside. So in this context, without doesn't mean not having any war. However, the people lived in walled cities. And, for example, if you study about the city of Babylon, Babylon was a well-fortified walled city. So wide, so broad, so thick was the wall surrounding the city of Babylon. The two chariots could run full speed side by side on top of the wall without falling off. Yeah? Not only that, people lived in the wall. And so... When you sing a song like Watch Men on the Wall of Zion Tell Us of the Night, the, the, the idea is that the people who dwelt on top of the wall were able to see when the sun was coming up long before the people who lived in the city. So the watchman who is watching the city, he is able to tell, tell us if the dawn will soon greet our sight. You understand? Um, it is like um, if you're in a stadium, in a stadium, and uh, night falls, it gets darker in the stadium before the outside because the sunlight cuts off as, uh, when it's going down and the sun is setting, then the shadow lengthens. Anyhow, enough of that. The, the bottom line is that the people lived in walled cities. And guess what? They had to reach in. <laughs> Gated cities, I must say, gated walled cities. And so as it drew near to sunset, you could see people moving like crazy, like mad ants, trying to get back into the city before the gate to the city was closed. 
Now, many of the cities were on hills. Yeah. Um, by the way, when we sing, I lift my eyes to the hill, for example, Jerusalem was said to be the city of God, the dwelling place of God, Jerusalem. And so when the psalmist said, uh, it is antiphonal, it's not as it appears in the scripture, really. Uh, I lift up my eyes to the hill. From whence does my help come? It's like a con conversation going on. And the answer is, the, answer, the, 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 the help doesn't come from the hill, but from the Lord who made the hills. So I lift up my eyes to the hill. From whence does my help come? The answer, my help comes from the Lord who makes heaven and earth, including the city and the hills. But anyhow, so the people had to rush back very quickly to reach into through the gate before it was sunset. And so those who were not diligent um, and moved speedily were locked out. <laughs> if you loitered, then you would be left out of the city. All right? And then you have this narrow upward trail going up to the city. And Jesus understood the culture. He understood the cultural circumstances. And so when he used the expression, narrow is the way, it was a very difficult path up the hill to the city. Right? And so he used that imagery to bring home to our consciousness that there is a wide road, indeed. And for the child of God, he or she has to constantly, constantly with determination and vigor, ascend the difficult trail. I don't know if you have ever climbed a hill before, but if you are stepping up a hill steadily, with your face bent toward, you know, because you, 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 if you climb the hill standing up straight, you could have a challenge, but you bend toward. And then when you reach a certain point, you're tired. If you try to stand up straight, I've had that experience, you could find yourself tumbling back where you're coming from. So it's like you have to be in a an incline going forward even though you're resting you have to rest holding on to something bending forward but if you ever try to get up instead of being inclined forward you could have a problem now jesus said that narrow is the way that leads to life and not many people find it and for those who find it they realize that the track is difficult but at the same time, rewarding. Because he said, narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. The same road that led home to the city, the ultimate destination, was difficult. And so the word straight, S-T-R-A-I-T, has to do with difficult. Difficult. A difficult terrain. But what? That same difficult track leads to the gates of the city. It leads to the gate of heaven. It leads to eternal life. Why do I bring this to you? There's a song that we used to sing. Uh, Must I be carried to the sky on flowery beds of ease while others fought to win the prize and sailed through bloody seas? I don't know. How many of you know that song? But that's the song we used to sing. Must I be carried to the sky On flowery beds of ease While others fall to win the prize and sail through In other words, our journey to heaven is treacherous. It's difficult. And that is why the patience of the saints is appealed to. If you were to go on a hike. Sometimes the beginning, the thought of going on hiking is exciting. Everybody, yeah, I want to go hiking. We're going to go Thursday. We're going to whatever. 
But when you begin to hike and begin to go and you cover mile and two miles, and then it begins to take a toll on you, at that point, some people are inclined to go back. But you also find a situation where you have reached so far of the winding trail, uh, the leader, the vanguard, the trailblazer, the one who goes before, um, is leading towards a certain destination. You don't know the journey, so you're following the leader. Turning back on your own could mean problem because you're going back on your own. You don't know the road. And then the journey back. If you are tired at that point because of that journey, you're going to be more tired going back where you're coming from. But what tends to happen is that the leader of the group tends to stop, stop at a certain point, you know, relax and, and go again. On your way back, it may be difficult for you to stop and relax because you run the risk of danger. You don't know who you're going to bump into as against moving against moving with the pack. As God's children, and we are journeying to heaven together, we encourage one another along the path. And the encouragement sweetens the labor. In other words, by talking with one another and encouraging one another, we cover more miles without recognizing it. It's like if you're driving on a far journey and you have somebody to talk with you, you cover the distance without recognizing. But if you go all by yourself, you're just there grappling with the tendency to doze and, you know, just you alone. You understand? And so the way to destruction is broad. You don't need to pick it. It says, come, here am I. And so many persons find it's easy. It's easy. It's just, you, you just slide along into the realm of nowhere. And so in this Christian journey, we have to remember the destination. The destination. It is the knowledge of our destination that makes the journey enjoyable. Uh, in itself, it is not enjoyable. As I said, straight is the path. It's difficult. But we are encouraged by what awaits us at the end. And that is why, as Christians, we must constantly remember that we have no abiding city here. We seek a city that is yet to come. And so, endure the hardship. Roll with the punches, for want of a better word. And sometimes you may be inclined to go back where you're coming from. But that's a no-no. No, no, no. Uh, was it Mary Mary? I remember when that song was a source of encouragement to me, not that I wanted to go back. But when I came to this country, you know, there were certain experiences, and I thought, God, you need to work these out. And then the song came ringing in a beautiful crescendo. I just can't give up now. Come too far from where I've started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy. And I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. And as God's children, the road may be difficult, treacherous, intimidating. But we can't afford to give up. Because he has not brought us this far to leave us alone. So turning back is not an option for God's children. We've got to keep on soldiering on with our backs bent towards the toil. We've got to go forward with determination, holding on with bulldog tenacity. We can't afford to look back. we got to operate like the great uh, warrior called Hingis Khan. Hingis Khan had a policy that he, that he called scorch the earth policy. What he did, as his soldiers journeyed with him, they would burn the bridges behind, they'll burn the fruit trees, everything behind them, they set it afire. And the idea was that no soldier should ever think about going back to get grapefruit or orange or pineapple or apple or anything. Everything is burned. So forward ever, backward never. Now, heaven is sounding sweeter. As we see the things that are happening in the world today, heaven is sounding sweeter, sweeter, sweeter. If there was a time that God's people could have taken the chance to turn back, 
such a time has long passed. This is not the time for God's people to look back where they're coming from. There's a little song that says, I'm too near to my home, too near my heavenly home. I just, I need to ask this, Erica to remind me that. But I'm, the essence is, I'm too near my heavenly home to turn back now. Nothing in this world to look back to. And so as we as God's children see the prophecies being fulfilled, as we see the terrible state of society, as we see multitudes going down to destruction, as we see people moving without a sense of direction, uh, in a hopeless state, as God's people, we must remember always that that same wide road that seems so attractive to many, it leads to eternal destruction. And I see sometimes where God's children take the chance to take a peek back into the world as if missing what they came out of. It's a dangerous thing. What's the danger? You can take a peep and never get the chance to return from that peep. Mm -hmm. It can become a forever peep. You know what could happen? All the good deeds and all the wonderful things that you would have enjoyed in Christ over the years would have been dashed to smithereen because you would have thrown away the bucket of milk having worked so hard to get the bucket full. So my word is, don't forget, the city was closed as night fell. The gate was closed. And those who were in were in. And those who loitered remain outside. Now, God is on the brink of closing the gate. We are approaching the darkest hour of earth's long night before the Lord's appearing. So this is not the time for God's people to give up. It's a time for God's people to cheer up, be joyful, and sing. So we don't join the murmuring pack of individuals who are talking about what is happening in the world and where it is going. We know that what is happening in the world, what's going to happen? The Bible tells us. So when we see things begin to happen, we must look up and take comfort from the, for the, from the fact that what we have been saying to the world over the years, is being proven now to be true. And so, how does it feel to be standing on the brink of something stupendous? How does it feel to know that you are a, a, a presenter of the very last message that will usher in the coming of Jesus Christ? How does it feel when you read, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth, as of now, from now on, and to know that you are a part of that blessed, that happy, preaching a message that Paul could not have preached because the time was not yet. That even the writer of the Revelation, John, could not have preached it because the time was not yet. But you as God's latter-day saints are privileged to proclaim the three angels' messages of Revelation 14, the very final message to usher in the coming of Jesus Christ. And when you look and see the state of society, it was prophesied that it would happen. And confirming the word of God, you look around and realize the word is true. What does it do to you? I say to you, keep hope alive. Be strong and be of good courage. Because soon and very soon, that which you have spoken of over the years will dawn upon you in great glory. I'm talking about the coming of Jesus Christ. That way, that's why we are called Adventists. Adventists. We are believers in the Advent. The second Advent. Jesus soon will come. And so. Keep courage. Don't look back. The world has its mouth. Open wide like a harbor shark. Ready. To gulp you down. Like a whale. And so, you just can't afford to give up now. Because the city gate is on the verge of being closed. You don't want to loiter. You don't want to straddle behind. You want to make it through the gate in the city. For outside are dogs, sorcerers, warmongers, 
idolaters, all kind of people, and those who love and make a lie. For example, people who know that God says something and try to spin to their comfort rather than preaching the plain, thus saith the Lord. All those people will be on the outside of the city. We have a privilege, brethren, to press on, never doubt it, because the captain is near. He is present to give us the necessary encouragement so that although the road may be difficult, the yoke is easy and the burden is light. And what makes the yoke easy and the burden light is that the Savior walks beside us and tilts the greater part of the weight towards his shoulder. So we are walking with him, but he is really, really bearing the burden of our sins. What a privilege it is to carry everything, holding back nothing, to God in prayer. So my word to you is, remember, it's a straight, straight and narrow path, difficult, challenging, but Jesus walks that path with you. Forget about where you're coming from. Put on your blinkers. You notice those horses when they're on the track? They put on blinkers. The idea is to keep the horse focused on the track that is in front of him or her, right? So it is with us. We have to wear blinkers so that we don't swerve to the left or to the right, but forward, onward, upward, through the gate, into the city. Because I tell you, night is drawing nigh. As the shadows of the evening steal across the sky. I'm talking about spiritual darkness. And dark clouds of worldliness are hovering over the mental skies of God's children. We just need to know where we are, where we are going, who we are walking with, and just keep stepping on the upward trail. Promise to be difficult, but at the end, rewarding. Therefore, broad is the way that leads to destruction. Many there be that walk therein. But I encourage you this evening to choose the upward straight and difficult trail because at the end of this treacherous journey there is a reward awaiting the saints and only those who endure to the end will be beneficiaries of this reward any comment any comment be anyway. being someone from the mountains hey! if you think it's, if you think it's hard going if you think it's hard going up the mountain, it's harder coming down the mountain for that two reasons. Cool. One is you are building up momentum. It's hard to control your speed as you're going down. If you get going too fast, there's only one thing that you can do to stop yourself, and that is to hit the ground. But also, if you're going up the mountain, you're following Jesus. If you turn around and go back down, you're leaving Jesus the further away from him you get the darker it gets and there's nothing worse than going down the mountain at night when you can't see that's true you know i yes mountain mama virginia you know as you as a little boy you know i used to go to the field my brother and my my brother and i would go to our father to the field and uh there are some fields that were slow really slow and I can tell yes. you, I've had experience already of, um, <laughs> and you're right, you're right. Going up the hill was quite okay. You know, you, you dig a little part, you put your toe in because you see, the, 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 going up the incline, your heel, <laughs> your, the calf pull, pulls up, so you, you, you tend to go up. The same yes. thing, that's how we walk. We go on our toes to go up, and so to do that going down is a problem. So, you know, and I remember having to drop something that I was carrying on my head. Sometimes you carry chocolate, sometimes mangoes, and just watch everything going ahead of you because, and then you pick up a slide and you slide a good hundred meter very easily when the place is slipping. Uh -huh. you know, so it's like, and that's why backsliding 
has that little tendency to have us going deeper, deeper, deeper. Yeah. Sometimes people turn back from Christ and somebody would say, man, how do you find yourself here, man? I didn't expect you to be here, but neither did the person expect to be there. But once you begin the downward trail, there's a momentum that goes with it that you find yourself doing things you don't even know how you... Anyhow, thank you, Elvern, for giving us that from Mountain Mama. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but also, else? if, if yeah. you're carrying a load up the hill, you have to keep the center of gravity in front of your feet. That's right. As you will do that sliding backwards that you're talking about. So... Right. Yeah, that, that's the same thing. Just that you use a more sophisticated language than me. That's the thing I was trying to bring across to the brethren. When you tilt forward, that center of gravity, you have to make sure your head is in front of you to bend forward to compensate that center of gravity. That's all right. Anybody else? Good evening. Good evening, Pastor. Hi, ah, yeah, the voice I've heard for a long time. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, we have the example with Lord wife looking back and turning into a pillar of salt. You know, we should we as God's people we gotta press on no matter how difficult the road is, but we know there's there's um a great reward ahead of us, everlasting life, you know, crown of life. So we the world will make us comfortable and that's a temporary thing. That's 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 not and to be without God forever, <laughs> that's the greatest loss. Anybody could ever have, you know, so we got to press on. Yeah, man, we got to press on no matter what. If we can fall, let's fall on the path. Yes, sir. But let's not come off the path. So let's continue. And, I, you know, I encourage my brothers and sisters. The only thing makes me sad, I'm glad that um, God saved me, that I didn't die in my sin, you know. Mm -hmm. But you know, I feel so sad for the brothers and sisters who are not saved because heaven will be sweeter when all of us are there. So you could imagine, remember that time when you talked with the Johnny Mango and how sweet it is when you shared with your wife? So you could imagine we share in heaven with a bunch of brothers and sisters, you know? So oh, yeah. that's why oh, we yeah. should pray. Yeah, we need to pray more for the brothers and sisters and press on. Yeah, and, and we, yeah, unselfishly, we've got to press together, press together. And LNG White said, yes. you know, press together is not just to squeeze upon one another. That, you know, the fellowship is one thing, but press forward together. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, yes. you know, um, when I went to the first general conference session in Indianapolis, 1990, that's the first time I went to a general conference session. And brethren, I left from my, that was my first pastoral district I was in. And at the time, I remember when um, the conference gave us letters. That time, you know, coming to America was easy. You know, you get a nice letter of invitation and things like that. So the conference had these letters that were done. And um, let me cut up the story very quickly. And, you know, you could give to a member who was desirous of going to general conference. So I walked in the churches and I would share the letter and talk about going to GC. And the first reaction for a lot of the older members, I don't know if I can make it. Da, da, da. There was a young lady. Well, well she was married and she had just been baptized recently and I remember like today when I read the letter I said all those who would want to go put up hand I'm asking those who would love to go in a put up hand and they, the, the, the older folk in the church begin to say I don't know if I'll be I don't know I don't think it. and this young lady was just baptized you know hard, hard to dry out of her water Say, I would like to go the long and short is that she got her letter and she went and thereafter, she began to go to America. She just began to get, you know, permit to travel, you know, visa, visa, and traveled all over the place and went to the general conference session. But this is what I want to say to you. When I was at the general conference session, Brett, knowing that I'm coming from this little, these little country churches where, you know, a little church, a humble little brethren. And when I saw my brethren from all parts of the world. I felt encouraged. I realized that Adventism was not just me and my few little churches up in the Rio Grande Valley. But I belonged to a bigger community. I saw Chinese, Japanese, Indonesian, African, different parts of Africa. And, 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 and you see the difference in the old physique and makeup and 
uh, and you look and realize that these are your people. They are all your people. You know? And then I sat there and when I looked around and I, I wanted to shout and to say to somebody, but I was looking where I was in the gallery, all around me were strangers. At the moment, I wish I could see one of my own brethren nearby to say, man, you know, I'm enjoying this, but everybody around me is an unknown quantity. And I said, man, but when I went to another one now, oh my goodness, certainly I could turn and say to my brothers, man, this, this, is, this is powerful. This is powerful. You know, when you hear God's people sing, and, and when you look and see God's people play instrument like the harp. When you hear some brethren sing from their heart, like I don't know if you ever hear some of these African groups singing to brethren, but let me tell you something. I don't know if it is because of the challenges that they are faced in life, but they come from very deep. They, they hold some notes there that make you want to go to heaven. And I'm telling you, when I went back to my country church I went back encouraged because it dawned upon me that this journey that seems so lonesome is a whole ton load of us on it going through our different circumstances but still pressing on it's so real and that's why it's important that we come to Amen. church because there's something about coming together and encouraging one another I know some Amen. people want to hold a little meditation in the corner. I challenge you. There's a place for your little meditation, your personal meditation. Where I'm sitting right now as I speak to you is where I hold my personal meditation. But separate and apart from this, there's a greater joy when my family come together in worship. And I hear Amen. what they have to say. Because just like a teacher, if you walk into a classroom and you talk that's why I like when the virgin talk back here I don't like when they give me silent night holy night because if I talk all that I have in my head I leave with all that I had in my head and nothing new but if I talk you get something I hope from what I say and when you talk I get back something from you so I leave richer I ain't I nine. yes man so when brother Kalik speaks and brother Vern speaks and he uses the idea of the center of gravity yes it rings a responsive bell inside Amen. We will press together yeah anybody yes. else before we pray. Um, i want i wanted to say something about you know like this is the last this is the last everything you remember the exodus from from egypt now we exiting out of this world and we going to zion we have to understand something now. We have, have to press on together as a family, love one another. Because listen, we this is the last everything, the last message, the last church. So we need to press on and fall in love with each other and pray for our brothers and sisters out there. Let's you're press right. on together. You're right. You're right. And I thank you for for um emphasizing that the last everything, last message, last church, it, 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 last it Exodus. Happen. Oh yeah. yeah. This is it. This is it, you know. We're we're talking about the earth made new. This one is going to be burned to ashes. And then Eden will bloom on earth again. So anybody who is looking back into the world right now is pretty much like with uh Sodom, where Lot's wife looked back. You can't afford the pillar of salt right now. Because it's more than pillar of salt. This one is something else. So we Forever. Gotta press on the upward way. The song says, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet where? On higher, higher, higher ground. Anybody else? Amen. I, I was waiting, but all right. Uh, no, I, I was about to say Cooper City has developed a silent thing now. <laughs> I <was> waiting <laughs> so we wouldn't dominate. But no, no, um, wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait. as far as um when when the scripture was read, uh verse 13 of Matthew 7, enter ye in at the straight gate, and for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. 
And I remember having a conversation with someone. Well, I don't even think it was a conversation. I, I think I made a statement that Christianity is uh, quite, can be quite difficult. Being a Christian can be quite difficult. That's, that was my experience, um, that it's not easy. And the response I got was Christianity is easy. Now, after reading this, I honestly don't believe that it is easy. And Christ made mention of that, that it's not going to be easy. And, and if I'm wrong, please correct me. But Christianity isn't easy, shouldn't be easy if we, we, we're reading this right now. It shouldn't be easy. If you, you have it quite easy, then some, I would think that something is wrong, that you may be on the broad path and not the narrow one. All right. Am I incorrect? Uh, yeah, you're very correct. When, it's not easy. It's not an easy ball, man. You see, it is not, you see, the thing about it, it, it's almost paradoxical because what really happens is that, okay, we find joy in serving. But that is what we do, our service. But we also bump into the backlash where, um, you know, evil is done to us in return. Say, for example, Jesus came and he gave love. Just love. But they killed him. And they plotted to stone him. You know, things like that. Stephen was stoned to death. It's not easy. But notice that Stephen, in dying, he looked to heaven. Notice where he looked. To heaven. And he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he was there. He, he, he Although he was being stoned, he had enough capacity to offer love to those who were killing him and saying to the father, lay not the sin to their charge. So it is because Stephen was able to look beyond that current circumstance and see something beckoning to him in the future. And he drew upon that energy, knowing that after this, it's like when Job said, I know that after worms, destroy this body in my flesh i'm going to see god my eyes shall see him and not another in other words nobody's going to see him for me everybody's going to see god for them i am going to see god for myself in his glory i shall see the king and it is this anticipation of something greater than the present that gives us the vibe and the impetus and the energy the zest and the vigor to keep going on and on and on. It is not the journey itself per se. Because it is mixed. Like for example. We feed the hungry and we feel happy. Um, we see a person healed and we shout hallelujah. But amidst that we hear the death news. Like today I, <laughs> I went out on the road. And when I looked. I saw a car. Should, should be going through the entrance onto a plaza. But I don't know. Apparently. I don't know. But the thing ran through some shrubbery, not the, the entrance gate, you know, tore down some field. This car is parked in the bushes on the, on, on the plaza. And I said, look at that. And another car over there smashed up. The other day I'm coming to church and when I look, the car just mangled up. What I'm trying to say is that the devil throws into the mix these unpleasant situations. That's why we talk about, when we say we long to see the Azor and reach that blissful home, is that we talk about uh, that land and that without alloy. And that without alloy. You know, that the happiness will ever dwell. And that without alloy, a kind of happiness. The alloy is a mix. They could have mixed zinc and copper or zinc and iron rather than straight iron or straight copper. It's a mix. So what we find here is that we have mixed feelings sometimes because you begin to rejoice about something and no sooner you begin to rejoice than something happens, a bad story, and throws off all of the happiness. So that is what happens in this world where our happiness is mixed. You're rejoicing about something this moment and a terrible news hits you and all the rejoicing is gone through the door. In heaven, it's going to be different. It is just happiness and more happiness, and yet more happiness, and that without a law, without mix. All right? So, Master. hey, Evangelist is in the house. Come in. So I was wondering, because it's, and 
my sister was onto something, right? Because God wouldn't create a narrow way. I mean, I had to look up the, the meaning of narrow, slender width. I'm thinking of a pathway, like being from the island. There's a pathway that people walk on and the grass slowly starts dying and it's, it, it forms a little pathway, a little narrow way. If more people walk on that pathway, the pathway begins to enlarge, right? So if you have a lot of people walking on it, that narrow pathway soon becomes a pathway for, you know, the, the goats to go on, a pathway for the donkeys to go on. I think we made the pathway narrow by not taking it. I mean, it's so, the message is so simple, right? Christ came, died for us on the cross, and he, there's nothing else that he could have done really to, to open up the floodgates for us here. He's done everything that he could. He made the covenant. He signed it and sealed it. We did nothing except for accept it. Yeah. So, so what really happened now is that um... we're, not, we're not going down that path. That's why maybe grass has grown on that path and it becomes a really narrow way because it, it's the, the enemy is pulling us away from the true pathway. Well, well, what, in this context, what really happened, and thanks for your contribution, what really happened is that we have some, I tell you what, where I am um, from, we have some beaten path. What really happened is still a narrow trek and, and, and because of where it's located is sometimes on the edge of the bank on the hillside it, it has to be it has to be narrow but but it becomes a beaten path it's more sunken than anything else because of the constant pounding of the feet it is more uh, a, a depression but but what really happened is that as god's children there are so many things that we have to shun there are so many things we have to say no to in order to stay on course Whereas other people can, as they walk, stretch and pick that, do that, do that. There's no control. There's no regulation. They're just free to do. And that is one of the things now that impacts some Christians. Looking over the fence, they say, boy, is that Christianity now becomes a burden for them. Because look at those people. They're enjoying themselves. They're going to carnival. They're going to the pub. They're gambling. Look at that. Look how happy they are. You see, we cannot afford to just concentrate on the moment. Because you will notice that at the end of that, a lot of people who are out there in the world, you know, when they're confronted with sickness or death is looming, they come back and cry out to the same God that they turn their backs on, you know, and as if God doesn't have memory. And there are a lot of people out there right now with the mindset that they're going to enjoy themselves until you know, life's evening sun is sinking low. Then they're going to cry out, Lord, have mercy upon me. Don't, don't practice to speak like the thief on the cross. He's in a different category by himself. You understand? Um, God wants us to live for him. To live in this world and live against the odds and fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. That's what we are called upon to do. And we have to shun evil and run away from this and run away from that. And keep running to Jesus because any day we don't run to him, there's a fellow that will run to us, you bet. And so, um, yeah, so so my word to God's people this evening is to keep pressing on the upward day and gain new heights every day. Keep pressing on. Keep pressing. The reward is sure. The reward that waits, awaits the people of God is out of this world. They never sense the word. And so, yeah, no matter what, don't <laughs> keep the center of gravity pa and push Pastor, forward. Yeah, we, we're not supposed to be comfortable here. This is not our world. Because um, when you give your life to Christ, you become uncomfortable. So I can understand that because God is trying to show us our reward is in heaven, not here. We don't take nothing from here. Everything from here will perish. So we should not perish with it. So we should leave this world. We should suffer to come out this world with God's people. And then our treasure is in heaven. That's right. So so, so God allows in his permissive will the bad experiences to come away to make us uncomfortable down here so that we'll yearn for the better place. And the, the level of comfort that we find, you know, 
it doesn't mean that you cannot have a nice house and a nice city and whatever it is. But we must not become so attached to the creaturely comforts that we have down here, to the neglect of the better country. And that is what, because the Lord has gone to prepare a place for those who serve him. And praise God, I am not serving the Lord anymore because I want to gain heaven. Heaven is going to be a natural consequence of serving Christ. By God's grace, I want to serve him out of love. He deserves it. Amen. I want to love the Lord, and then naturally heaven will fall in line. I have come to recognize that if we, if we serve God because we want to escape hell, that's a selfish motive. And if we serve him because we want to gain heaven, that is also selfish. We must serve him out of love, and heaven will be automatic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. For, for God, uh, yeah, right. because he loved us so much that he gave. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thief comes to kill, Hi. to destroy, but Lord Hi. comes that we may have life and have it more abundant. I hear somebody? Yeah, this is Jenny. Just one of, you know, I know um, the, uh, my brother was saying, Sister Jenny. You, you're, not, you're not taking this stuff for this world with you, but what I'm praying for in my personal life, and I, you know, God is good, is a character of Christ. That's what you're going to take with you. And you want, when he comes, he said, I know you not. You, you don't want him to say, I know you not. That, that very text was, in, that text was in my head this evening. Go ahead. When we, so I find myself being a defender for the truth, a witness to the Bible, you know, love Christ with all your heart. As you said, we can't, I realize I can't want to go to heaven because I'm scared. I remember having that feeling because you don't want to be consumed. But you want to serve God when you realize, I'm glad about the Sabbath school lessons we're doing. It shows us the how, the love of God. And if you can't fall in love with God, then I, I would suggest praying, praying to him for that. Yeah. Well said. Actually, the theme for our thing this weekend coming up is that I might know him. I don't know if people realize how important it is. And thank you for your contribution to this. Um, you know, that I may know him. Because that is where eternal life is, you know. Coming back to what was said earlier on about, I know you not. I know you not. Can you imagine hearing the Lord says, saying to somebody at the very last day, when everything is being determined, <laughs> I do not know you. That's tough. That's tough. If, if the Lord says to you, I know you not, then pretty much it's saying your, 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 your fate is already decided for destruction. Because there's no hope on that last day. There's no hope for those who are, and there are a lot of preachers talk about there's going to be a little thousand year and thing like that where, um, you know, people get the chance, a second chance. And the saints will go and minister to those who will never listen to me. That is cold, cold comfort. You understand? When the Lord says it is done, that's what it means. You know, it is finished. When Jesus should have ended his mediatorial work in heaven and take off that robe and say it is finished. It means that mercy is gone. Run out. And he that is filthy, got to remain filthy. That, that's, a, that's a terrible thing. And Brother, Brother, Brother Calix alluded to something earlier on. Death physically, physical cessation of life, is not the real, real thing to be worried about. Because with that, there's hope to live again. What the big concern is to be eternally separated from God. That is the thing. So when it said the wages of sin is death or the true and just, just reward of sin, that's what it's talking about. Not just to go into the grave because one day soon death too shall die. That's not the, the problem thing. 
And the Lord proved it with himself, defying death, and with what he did for Lazarus, etc., etc. If a man dies, shall he live again? The answer is yes. And Job said, I'm going to wait until my change comes. That's what we need to do, wait. When mortals shall put on immortality. You understand? Change in the twinkling of an eye. So such a time is coming. But the eternal separation from God is going to be more painful than any fire. You understand? And when one recognizes what one could have gained as a result of serving God and to lose out on that eternal reward, oh my word, it's not worth it. So I want to encourage all of us to keep on keeping on. All right. So we're going to pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to pray. Brethren, I don't know if it is happening to you, but it's like there, there are so many persons out there needing prayer. It's like you can't keep up. I'm serious. It's like you cannot keep mm. up. You cannot keep up. And uh, we really need one another. You know? Amen. And, and I believe with all my heart that the state of the world as it is right now is severely impacting a lot of God's children. You see from that COVID thing, believe it or not, psychologically, not just physically, but psychologically, many, many individuals have not recovered as much as they would want to think. You know what I'm saying? COVID sent a shock into all of us because we didn't understand and the scientists were discombobulated and confounded and everything like that. Until, you know, we're going to see a little light at the end of the tunnel, but that little period, brethren, it did something. That period when we couldn't shake hands, we couldn't give a little chick chips on the cheek, we couldn't it's like we scorned one another for a long time. How many of you remember when grandparents went to look for their grandchildren? Our grandchildren went to look for the grandparents and they, they had to hang a sheet on a wire and a line in front of the house. Some put up a um, bathroom curtain and hug through the curtain. How many of you remember that that happened? You know, parents couldn't go. One man had his wife in the... um hospital, dying, couldn't go in there. How did he get to see her? Had to use like a um, you call a ladder um, from like a the, the, the fire truck would send him right up to the window where the person is and look at his wife dying through the window because he was not permitted to go inside. Do you remember that, all of that? And as a result of that is a lot of we have a lot of individuals who have not yet had closure. You know, relatives died, couldn't attend the funeral. One of my good faithful members died in Jamaica. In fact, she had asked, she had written down on a piece of paper for me to do her funeral years ago, unknown to me. And she mentioned something. When she died, and the government of Jamaica limited the number of persons who could go to the grave and how many could go into the church. Of course, I'm here, and there are so many other persons, family members, and it was really limited. And the elder had to tell me, you know, how much limited it was there and then. And then I watched the funeral service from online. A funeral that I was... And by the way, he discovered when all the planning went on, he called me to tell me of the death and the funeral and everything. And he just caught me back about two minutes after the past. He'd never believe what happened. He bumped into his wife in the drawer. This list that she had written down for me to <laughs> for her funeral, he wrote years ago, and for another pastor who by then was dead, and another one was also dead, and another one who was sick at the moment. And I said, look at that. You understand? But she had written that down for me to do the funeral. But COVID limited the number of persons. You understand? It's something that, how do you recover from that? You understand? And that impact, I think only something like heaven can neutralize the impact of all of that. See? But let us yearn for heaven because, um, yeah, down here kind of sick. <laughs> okay. All right, brethren. We're going to pray. Yay! Sister Shirley, um, Sister Shirley, uh, Sister Jenny, 
told me about Sister Shirley. We have to pay our condolences. Her sister died, so we're going to pray for her. Who? Sister Shirley. Two shoes be Sister Jenny. She's this short little lady with, um, so always have a cane. Oh. Oh. Yeah, her sister uh, died. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, her sister died. So we have to pay our condolences and pray for her. Thank you for that bit of information. So right down, brother and sister Shirley. That's Shirley Daniel now. Take note of brother, that from me. Mm -hmm. Brother Max. Yeah. Brother Casimir. Brother Casimir, Max Casimir. Brother um, Sister Staples. Brother Joey. How is Sister Staples? Yeah, and Sister also Staples. Sister Lynn. Sister Lynn. Yes, I spoke to her. I pray with her just this week here, Sister Lynn. Okay. She might just be listening now. Yeah, man, and all the brothers and sisters from both churches, you know. And I'm also going to pray for you, Pastor, and you leaving for Puerto Rico. Um, <laughs> Tomorrow. We'll pray for Travel Moisey, yeah, man. Pray for you as well, you and your family, Travel Moisey. Yeah. That you go and speak God's word. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Sister, sister, sister Veronica, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Save the day, Sister Erica. Sister Veronica. Yeah, she, mm. she did a procedure. She's online, but she's in, in quite a bit of pain. All right, all right, Sister Veronica, we're praying for you. We saw your testimony, too, in the church chat. Keep, cor keep courage and keep hope alive. Brethren, you don't know, well, probably you do, the blessing of having a church family. Let me tell you something. A lot of people out there, Wish they had a church family like you have, where you have your concerns. You can just tell the brethren and see making the rounds as they pray for you. Anybody else? Thank you very much. And they answer. intercede for us. Sister Intercession. Joy, Sister Joy. Sister Joy Cope. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Your uh, neighbor across is, uh, name is Claudine. It's C L A U D I N. And also, Claudine. we want to remember. Uh, David um, Lojack. Claude in and David Lojack. Yes, I remember that name. Yeah. Uh, Cla Claude in, C L A U D I N. He's, yeah, yeah. I think he's Jamaican. Claude in. And David Lojack. All right. I want to remember whether Dave, uh, Dave and his son, Eric. Sister Rita. Sister Gina Martin. Rita Bullock. Sister Gina, mom, her brothers and family. So Gina, your request going up for your people? <laughs> Sister Gina's family. Yeah. Also, uh, the um, uh, the Powells had a death in the family as well as um, the um, Lastics had a death in the family. Powell has another then, death in his family? Yeah, the last... The pal, yeah, his, it was his uh, brother, I guess, that had died, but it was a few oh, weeks, a ago. weeks ago. Okay, yes, yeah. I, yeah, so, no, no. you're frightening, <laughs> oh my goodness. And Brother Lassie, oh. I tried to get Brother Lassie, but it didn't work, I, I don't know. I don't know if you got it. Yeah. And then uh, Lawson family as well. Yeah. We prayed for you the other day, Laverne, since the Lord made sure to. Thank you, appreciate it. All right. Anybody else? Come right away. Myself, myself. I like to pray for myself yes, as well and my family. Brother colleagues, brother colleagues and Brother Cotton's family. Brother Cotton, I, I know that God is not sleeping. Yes, brother Cotton's family. Write them down, you know, brethren. Remember, you must always have 10. 10, 10. When you come to prayer meeting, have 10 in them. So you must be ready to write. Write down names. All right. So... And I hope you don't get weary of praying. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So want to remember. And um, by the way, just a little aside here, a little commercial. I watched the eclipse the other day. And I tell you, it sent me thinking. I don't know how many of you were privileged to watch it. I watch it on television live and the 
I can just imagine what it must have been like for those who are physically present. To see okay, the, to watch the, it down to the glasses. Yeah, and, and um there's a friend of mine that we used to work together in his conference. He lives in Texas and I called him, I said, let me call him and he said, I said, How is it, man? He said, Man, I'm writing it right now. I said, please take a photograph, take a selfie with you in it as it gets eclipsed. And uh, he said he's gonna try. He sent me some pictures, I haven't looked at it yet. But brethren, to see the broad daylight become night, that the street lights came on. And all you could see is the light from the little cell phones. And I saw a star in the heaven, you know? And it reminds me of the dark day that Adventists talk about, you know? But um, I think God wants us to pay attention upstairs. And I listened to some of the reporters. They were just on the edge of trying to say God is good. But one person said it. I think Al Roker, but... It, it, they talk about it seems so magical. They end up talking about magic. This is the power of God demonstrated in the heavens, man. The heavens, brethren. And so <laughs> the heavens declaring the power of God. And men don't want to acknowledge him. Tell you, I see some people there. I know they were touched. Because there's nothing they could do about it beyond them. And I mean, it's just God. All right. I want two volunteers to pray, as usual. Two volunteers. I'm going to ask for the volunteer from Cooper City. Who is Cooper City's volunteer? You know, on a few occasions, Hollywood pray for Cooper City. All right, Hollywood, volunteer. Yeah, I'll go. All right, Elder Vern is volunteering for Hollywood. All right. All right. Since we don't have any volunteer from Cooper City, you may have to pray for everybody, Brother Vern. Okay. All right. All right. Remember, brethren, we're going to the attitude of prayer and then let God have his own way. Okay. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the being able to come to you with all of our problems, no matter how large they seem or how small they seem, when we look at the size of this universe and what happened here just a few days ago that we feel like was an attention getter so that you would tell us to look up that our redemption is coming and it's coming quickly. And Father, the way that the sun is 400 times bigger than the moon, but the moon is 400 times closer to the earth, and it's perfect with the uh, size and distance to block out the sun. And even though they're not all in the same plane at the same time, except for occasionally, and then it hit here in the United States when it happened, it's uh, a miracle, and that we got to view that and witness it and experience it. We thank you, and we were thinking about you during all of that. Father, we have uh, requests tonight, and I know that you know every hair on every head. I don't know all the names or the situations on the Cooper City side, but it, you know what they are, and I just ask that you would lift, we lift them up so that you would be able to uh, get them through whatever things that they're going through and they also I'm sure have plenty of praises we want to thank you for that and praise your holy name for that I think of my brother that lives across the street from me brother Claudine that had the procedure run um, recently and I thank you that I was able to speak with him this evening and he's doing well and I told him we'd have prayer for him tonight and he's appreciative of that and um Thank you for being a witness to him and his family. I want to remember also Father um, Brother David Lojack that he's still recovering and uh, seems to be doing well. We just ask that you keep your healing hand on him and all the others as well. I want to remember Lois and her whole family. 
be with them as um, they're trying to get over some sicknesses in some parts of the family and give them strength and be with Vern Curtis as he's coming out from under his uh, surgery still with the soreness and um, give him the ability to be back to normal as soon as possible. We think of the Powell family and the Lastic family for the uh, losses that they have uh, recently withstood and we just ask that you would be with them to strengthen in their faith as um, they try to find closure in that. We think of Sister Shirley Daniel and, and Brother Max, Sister Staples, Sister Lynn, and Brother Joey, Sister Veronica, Brother Leon, and Brother Cotton. We want to uh, lift them up in both praises and requests, and you know what those requests are, Father. Also, we ask that you be with our dear pastor as he's traveling uh, to Puerto Rico, protect him, and give him a special measure of the Holy Spirit that he might be a witness for you to deliver that message. And we hope that many, many bat baptisms will come about as a result. If not, while he's there, that um, it'll put people to thinking after he's left, and they still, as a result, would be uh, getting baptized. Father, once again, we want to thank you for Jesus and all that he's done for us. He paid the price for us. We look forward to his soon coming. Be with us as we're going through this wicked world. Keep us on the straight and narrow and help us to keep our eyes upon you. In these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Virgin, I have a word. Amen. You. When you pray, when you pray and things don't come out the way you want to immediately or whenever, that's no reason for giving up. Just keep on keeping on. God is doing his thing in his own way, in his own time. And we just need to work with him and wait patiently on the Lord. For those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. So don't give up. Don't be discouraged. God bless you. Have a blessed rest of the week. And remember to... God bless you. Prayer there. Yes. Uh, by the way, I should have said, you know, today's a special day. Master Roger's gone on a leg, a journey. He has a special number of hours that he targeted to finish by a certain time. And he's way ahead. And today will mark the achievement of that hour of flight. And I want to praise God for that. It, it means a lot. It means a lot. All right. God bless Amen. you, brother. Amen. Take care of yourself. And... God bless. God right. bless. God bless you all. I love you all.